In part one of this uh, video, which you should have seen first, I discussed the construction and the results I got from building an LVT, a linear velocity transducer, for my shock dynamometer. In this video, we're going to look at how I get the signals from the LVT into some PC software that I wrote for analyzing the performance of the shock under test. And we'll also look at the important considerations of the range of velocities, the resolution we can expect, and how we can calibrate it. There has to be some form of data acquisition system. Here are just a few examples of ones that uh, I've, I've used. Everybody knows about the Arduino. I tend to favor one or either of these uh, two lab jacks, the U3 or the T7, because they have greater resolution than the Arduino. The U3 lab jack needs to be fed with a signal between uh, 0 and 2.4 volts, but the output of the LVT is a lot lower than that. So between the two, I have an instrument amplifier with the reference AD623 to increase the signal level more suited to the lab jack. If we look at the circuit, the 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor on pin 7 is purely a decoupling capacitor on the 5 volt supply. RG is a gain adjusting resistor. In my case, that's 27K, which gives a gain of approximately five times. The two resistors, R1 and R2, are to set a zero voltage level. R1, in my case, is 3,000 ohms, and R2 is 1,000. This gives a four to one voltage divider, which puts a voltage of 1.25 volts on the reference pin, which is number five. The input voltage from the LVT swings plus and minus, but the required input to the lab jack needs to be based on zero. So what we want to be compatible with the lab jack is to have zero input voltage equal midway between zero and the 2.4 maximum input that the lab jack can take. So the effect of the voltage divider R1 and R2 is to give a reference of 1.25 volts on that pin which will be achieved when the input is zero. The lab jack interprets 1.25 volts as zero and then swings between naught and two and a half roughly. An Arduino takes an input between 0 and 5 volts. If we were to use an Arduino, then we would need to bias it such that 0 was close to 2.5 volts, halfway through the maximum swing, in which case the resistors R1 and R2 would be equal to one another. There are other signals such as temperatures and force and an index pulse which need to be fed into the lab jack as well. So to incorporate the instrument amplifier and as a termination for these other input signals, I milled a simple printed circuit board to take these terminations. The multi-pin plug that you can see takes a cable which passes all of these signals through to the lab jack, which in turn passes its output to the PC via a USB cable. The resolution or bit count of the digital to analog conversion in our data acquisition hardware determines the range, accuracy and resolution that we get from the results. The, the basic Arduino is nominally a 10-bit device, the LabJack U3 12 bits and the T T7 has a choice but we'll look at the 16 bit version. We've seen that in order to convert the AC input signal, one that varies either side of zero, we have to bias the output 
of the instrument amplifier so that zero on the input is represented by a voltage level of half the maximum output swing of the digital to analog conversion. Therefore, the useful number of bits for determining the value of the signal is one less than the nominal amount. In other words, the Arduino Uno is really nine bits for our purposes, the Labjack U3 is 11 and the T7 is 15. So that will have the range that we can measure over. The range is the ratio between the maximum velocity that we can measure and the minimum velocity that we can discern. In the case of the 10 or really 9 bit Arduino, that gives us a range of close to 500 to 1. That is, if we wanted to be able to measure a velocity of, say, 500 millimeters per second, then the minimum velocity that we could determine would be 1 millimeter a second. The table shows the values for the two labjacks. The resolution is simply the inverse of that and I've specified it in the table as a percentage of the maximum velocity that we want to measure. So we can see that the resolution with the Arduino would be 0.2% of the maximum velocity that we had scaled it to read and progressively smaller resolutions with the two lab jacks. The resolution of the 9-bit Arduino at 0.2% uh, seems pretty good, but that's not even half the story. That's 0.2% of the maximum values that we want to measure. When we have lower value signals to measure, as on this table, I've got two examples, one which is a tenth of the reference level and one which is a twentieth. We can see how the situation changes. Now with the resolution referenced to the actual signal level rather than the maximum signal level that we can take, the resolution increases in inverse proportion to the level of the signal. So what we find is that with our tenth signal, instead of 0.2%, we have a resolution of 2%. With the twentieth value signal, we have 4%, which is probably totally unacceptable. If we go to the 11-bit case, the Labjack U3, for example, then we can see that we've got a resolution of 1% of the signal value, even when we've got a 20th of our reference signal. And the 15-bit case is even closer. Increasing the hardware resolution is one way to increase our accuracy with low value signals. Another way where it's practical is just simply to change the gain of the instrument amplifier. That's akin to changing to a different range on a multimeter. So now we have a device which through setting the gain in the instrument amplifier we can have it to cover very high velocities or very low velocities but we've left with one problem, that of calibration. We get a signal out for a certain voltage, which is proportional to the velocity, but how do we relate that? In general, you would do that by having some reference velocity that you could uh, connect in parallel with the LVT. In my case, it's even easier because as we can see, the driving disc has nine different holes in it all at different radii. They've been accurately machined, so with the connecting rod in any particular hole, I know to a reasonable degree of accuracy the peak-to-peak -peak displacement. If, after measuring the velocity and then calculating the displacement from that, if that displacement is different from the displacement that I know to be correct, it's just a simple matter of calculating a scaling factor which the software can then apply to both the displacement and velocity curves. Well, I think that's about it. 
If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.